This trip I'm going to take now is going to be extremely different than most of them that I take for the Ghost Town Wonders. I'm going to tag along with my wife, who's heavily involved as a volunteer for uh, spay air neuter clinics and uh, dog animal rescues. I'm going to, out to a place in particular in the Navajo Nation located in Northeast Arizona called Chinle, Arizona. We're going to help uh, do the spay and neuter clinic out there. She helps out a group called um, Soul Dog Rescue, which is um, located out of Fort Lupton, Colorado. While we're out there, we're also going to do a tour of Canyon de Chez. So come along with us and let's go explore that area. This is what the first two days of our trip looked like. This is a bunch of volunteers performing spay and neuter services to the Navajo Nation in Chinle, Arizona, a group called Soul Dogs. These volunteers did all this work for no charge. Most all the spellings that you see of this, if you looked at it, you would think, think that it's pronounced Canyon de Chile, when in fact that is not the case. It is actually pronounced Canyon de Che. The establishment of a national monument has been long standing and has been a big interest of the National Park Service for many years. The Navajo Tribal Council met on this matter in July of 1930 at Fort Wingate. Their main concern is that the underlying ownership of that area did not change and it remained in the hands of the Navajo Tribe of Indians. On April 1 of 1931, President Herbert Hoover issued a proclamation for the creation of the Canyon de Che National Monument. He cited the approval of the Navajo Tribal Council and the Congress. Furthermore, he believed it was in the public interest and that the monument status would preserve the ruins for future archaeological interests and activities. The National Monument consists of about 131 square miles and includes three major canyons. They're known as Del Muerto, De Che, and Monument Canyons. In addition to the guided tour at the bottom of the canyon, we took a self-guided tour, uh, which was on the south rim. There's about seven overlooks there. And then the next day, we took a self-driving tour along the north rim, which there's about four overlooks. I was able to take a guided tour down inside the canyon with uh, one of the Navajo members. Almost immediately after we entered the mouth of the canyon at the very beginning of this trek, saw nothing but beauty and it only got better as we went further up the canyon. This canyon contains many ruins of long deserted villages. As we drive through the bottom of this canyon, many of these villages are perched upon high ledges along sheer walled canyons. They stand as an enduring monument to the culture of the ancestors of the present-day Pueblo Indians of the southwestern United States. The ancestors of the Navajo Indians, some of which today live on a seasonal basis here in the canyon, they came here long after the early peoples had left. It is believed that most of the large cliff housings in these canyons were built between 1100 and 1300 in the Pueblo period. During the 1200s, a prolonged drought parched the area that is known as Four Corners, which includes Arizona, Utah, and Colorado, and New Mexico. About 1300, the drought and perhaps other causes forced the people of Canyon de Che and other nearby Pueblo centers to abandon their homes and scatter to other parts of the southwest. Between 1300 and 1700, it is believed that this canyon was only occupied sporadically by the early Hopi Indians of Arizona. About 1700, the Navajo Indians, who were then concentrated in northern New Mexico, began to occupy the Canyon de Che. This is a somewhat famous photo taken in 1904 in Canyon de Che of seven Navajo riders. This uh, photograph was taken by a professional photographer by the name of Edward Sheriff Curtis. He was born in 1868 and died in 1952. He concentrated his work on the American West and Native Americans. 
These next several pictures are the petroglyphs of what we saw down in the canyon. This is one of the first views that you can come to in the overlooks at Canyon de Chez. It's called Tunnel Canyon. You can see in the background there. This is the second overlook that you come to on the uh, south rim. It's called Sege Overlook. Pretty amazing, you just kind of get to wander around here as you wish. You can see the sheer drop off cliffs. Obviously you don't want to take any chances and risk getting too close to that. This is the overlook at Spider Rock, which is one of the last stops on the um, self-guided tour that we drive on the South Rim. As you look up there, you can see Canyon Deche, which is one of the major canyons. 
and then as we sweep over to here to the right the other major canyon here is called Monument Canyon it's a view of that right there Spider Rock is named after the Navajo goddess Spider Woman who was a lovable old crone cryptic but wise who gave Navajo women the gift of weaving and otherwise amused herself by inflicting harmless and often instructive mischief on her beloved people. She lived atop at the 900 foot tall pinnacle. This location is known as Massacre Cave. It's named so because in 1805, Antonio de Narbona led a Spanish military expedition into the canyon, hoping to put an end to the disputes over the Spanish settlements expanding into the Navajo country. Narbona claimed that uh, his forces killed as many as 115 Navajo people and 33 were taken captive. This is one of the few reported confrontations between Spanish troops and the Navajos in the canyon, but it is a sad mark on the history of this beautiful canyon.
This is a view of the mummy cave ruins taken from the overlook of the same name. Mummy Cave got its name from an archaeological survey that was performed in 1882 when a gentleman by the name of James Stevenson surveyed the area for Smithsonian Institute. He made sketches, took photographs, and prepared ground plans of 46 ruins in the two main canyons. Stevenson found two mummies in a rock shelter ruin in the northern canyon. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this historical presentation of Canyon de Chez. It's a wonderful trip, a wonderful area. Hope you all get a chance to get out there someday. Thanks for watching. Well, what did you think of that video, guys? Wasn't that some very beautiful scenery? What a great history that was, too. Especially some of that prehistoric or ancient history, I should say. A lot of that history was created by those that had done archaeological surveys throughout the years. And so they're the ones who unearthed that whole sequence of uh, old, old history. And then, of course, there was some newer history, more recent modern history, date back into the 1860s and 1890s and up and until the 1930s when it became a part. I appreciate all those that have watched the film or the videos. And I really appreciate the, all the subscribers to my channel. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that you can see more content just like this. Have a good one and thanks for watching.